Hi everyone and welcome back to Art Historian. Today we are going to be continuing our discussion about the Renaissance era of art history by talking about Michelangelo. And this is something that I am heavily considering splitting this video into two different parts because I like Michelangelo a lot and I have a lot to say about him. He is similar to Leonardo da Vinci. Michelangelo was a polymath, um, but whereas Leonardo da Vinci spanned a lot of different fields like engineering, architecture, sciences, Michelangelo was very much focused on sculpture first and then a little bit of painting as well. Um, so he is another one. I'm pretty sure that art historians are going to be in an empty battle until Judgment Day fighting over who is the greatest artist of all time, Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci. So right around the time that Michelangelo starts to become a little bit famous for his art, we see a new section of the Renaissance era start to open up. And this is an area where artists are starting to become a little bit more controversial before this, um, Donatello and da Vinci were definitely pushing the boundaries, but they were very even-tempered. You didn't see a lot of emotion put into their work. In Michelangelo specifically, but also a little bit in Raphael's, we start to see a lot more personality come through in art. And one of those reasons is that Michelangelo just had a super intense personality. He was very fiery, he had a reputation for being hot-tempered, um, and we see a lot of that boldness come through in some of his pieces that we're going to look at. So Michelangelo was kind of like a rock star, like most people loved him, but not necessarily everybody's cup of tea at the time, um, but he did manage to pull a lot of super important patrons, which allowed him to have a very successful art career from an early age. So artstory.org describes Michelangelo's artwork as psychologically intense and having emotional realism, which this is unmatched by any artists that we have seen ever. <laughs> While artists like da Vinci and Donatello were looking towards ancient Greece and ancient Rome and kind of recreating antiquity, Michelangelo took those and really added something to it with the emotion and intensity that he put into his art pieces. Something that you need to know in an effort to better understand Michelangelo's work is that he was very interested in cadavers. He was very interested in the human anatomy and for that reason he was allowed to work with a lot of cadavers and that interest comes through very heavily in a lot of his work. We're going to see a lot of super precise musculature and some really intense muscles that we haven't seen before. So I think I'm going to start with the creation of Adam, which is the most famous piece depicted on the Sistine Chapel. So this piece is a fresco that was created between the years 1508 and 1512. The entire Sistine Chapel project took about four years. As I've said, Michelangelo considers himself more of a sculptor than a painter, but he was supposed to produce a very ambitious sculpture for Pope Julius II. And that ended up falling through, so instead they decided to do this still ambitious but a little bit less expensive painting on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. And this was considered to be such a great honor because this is where all new popes get their popeship decided. Like many of the paintings that we look at, this has a lot of depth and I could talk endlessly about the speculations and the neat little tidbits that are added into it, but I will spare you all of that and hit the high points. This is a depiction of Adam as a creation coming to life and more importantly gaining consciousness. That was a point that Michelangelo wanted to emphasize. So you see Adam in this kind of relaxed, languid state. He's kind of like 
reaching up a little bit, not a lot of effort. And in the religious perspective, some people take that as man is lazy, man is not trying to reach the divine. But it really was meant to depict at the time just the lack of vitality within Adam before he was touched by God. So we see God on the other side. He is clothed. You would not want to have depicted God in the nude at this time. We see God rushing over with his angels, waiting, just trying to reach Adam to give him this life and consciousness. Now, on one hand, there is supposed to be a distinct divide between God and Adam, the divine and man in this painting. But on the other hand, God is still being depicted as having a very intimate relationship with man. And that was definitely supposed to be emphasized. So before this, God would have been shown in a way we might see a king. He's got servants for these things. He doesn't need to put in the effort. He is chilling on the throne. And this is the first time that God was depicted as an entity who is pursuing man. And as an entity who is a giver of life. Uh, another thing that we see in this is the anatomy. Um, it's obvious that there was very close attention paid to the muscles and almost a little bit exaggerated, um, which if we were to look at other parts of the Sistine Chapel, we would definitely see some exaggeration in the muscles and in the frame, but we just see that interest in anatomy heavily coming through in the paintings on the Sistine Chapel. So next time we are gonna talk about another very famous piece created by Michelangelo called The David. And I have a lot to say about The David. I'm very excited to make a video on it. I'm gonna be actually comparing um, Donatello's David that we looked at a couple videos ago with Michelangelo's David. This is an area of art history that we really start to see intense boldness and emotion coming through. So we're gonna move in our next couple of artists into some more emotional pieces and I'm just excited to keep talking about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video educational, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, or click on this bell. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. As you can see, I dressed up today to talk about Michelangelo. Felt right. <laughs> so I'll get right into it. <laughs>